Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is the Mermail Master coming at you guys from the Team Time Riders Yugi Tube channel today with a bandless discussion and analysis video. Um, if you guys have not seen already, uh, the reaction video for this is up. Uh, Tamias recorded this on the day that the bandless came out, so if you guys have not seen that, it's a live reaction to all of the cards that came off the list. Um, please feel free to check that out, and um, link will be in the description below. Um, but today's video is going to be very much a discussion and analysis video, uh, taking a look at all of the choices and changes that Konami made and why Konami made them. So, uh, without further ado, guys, let's get into the ban list and um, we'll see why Konami decided to hit the things that they did. So, starting off on the list, we have Dynamite Knight, the true Draco fighter. Now, if you guys have seen the previous ban list prediction video, you will know that um, actually. Uh, when Tamias presented it, I was the one who indicated that the card would either be going to zero or one. Dynamite is very much a consistency card in the deck, and what that means is that, you know, basically Dynamite is the playmaker for all of the different combos in the deck. So, you know, you flip up a trap card, like, you know, something that happened to me, flip up a trap card, um, tribute some of the Dynamite, uh, Dynamite outright, trap card pops something, um, and then if your opponent activates any other effect, you get to set a trap from your deck. And then or you get to activate a trap card directly from your deck, a true Draco trap card. And then um, the trap cards, whenever they're activated, immediately and right away allow you to tribute summon another monster. So you get out another masterpiece, get another pop, and then can use the quick effect as well. Um, this combo actually decimated a BES board that I made um, during the end phase of my opponent's turn after he had... Uh, you know, done all of that during the end phase of my turn. And so the true power of true Dracos is in its ability to disrupt your opponent. And taking away Dynamite was a very, very big hit to that consistency. Um, they effectively have to build true Draco Turbo in a way. Um, a lot of people really underestimate the hit that, uh, that true Dracos took. People said that Masterpiece or Diagram should have been hit, but... Um, I disagree with that. I think Masterpiece and Diagram are fine at three. Diagram's actually really good for other worm decks. But that being said, that <clears throat> Masterpiece and Diagram are not the things that contribute to the crazy combos. So, you know, if Masterpiece by itself was just in a deck, that's not enough to, to, to really make it any kind of contender. Uh, so I agree that um, I'm very, very happy to see that Dynamite, the true Draco fighter, got banned instead of put to one. Um, true Dracos lose literally all their consistency as a result of that. So, moving on, we have Grand Soil the Elemental Lord. Um, a nice preemptive hit by Konami. If you guys have not seen the Grand Soil Firewall loops, I invite you to go check them out on YouTube. They're crazy, they're nuts, um, people looping all over the place. And degenerate infinite loops of, these, of this manner are very, very... Um, unhealthy for the game. So it's great to see the Konami put a preemptive hit on Grand Soil. Now moving on, one of the more surprising hits I saw was True King Lithosagem the Disaster. And this was a direct hit against dinosaurs. Um, people have predicted that Konami doesn't like um, the fact that dinosaurs were able to win worlds. But uh, True King Lithosagem is a major, major hit to the deck because of how much strength Lithosagem brought. Um, you know, from popping dinosaurs in your hand, like your uh, Petit Pteranodon and your baby Sarasaurus, to just, you know, being able to put a lot of advantage on board and rip cards out of your opponent's extra deck that they possibly need. Not, not seeing this to one, in fact, seeing it banned is a huge, huge hit to the deck. And True King Dinos, like, who used to run this at two and three, are really, really in a bind as a, re as a result of this. The other True Kings, as well as their XYZ, um, are still out, but uh, True King Lithosagem really put a lot of power in the deck. And moving on from that, another hit to Dinos was the banning of Deng Long first of the Yang Zing. Um, this card was actually used way more in Dinos than it was in Yang Zing as a way to not only mill a true king to the graveyard, but to also give you a level 9 monster on the field for XYZ summons. It could even search the Yang Zing trap card, the counter trap, which allows you to negate a bunch of things. And I know some dino players who actually ran that for a while um, for like an all-purpose kind of engine. Denglong is a... Um, 
it's a generic it's a generic synchro monster, a generic level five synchro monster with just a ton of power, and it fixed a lot of problems in Yang Sings. Unfortunately, though, um, Dinos were the the archetype that got a much better use out of it than Yang Sings did, so had to go. Uh, next card that we have on here is Digusto Emerald. And to be honest, I'm not really surprised with this hit, and I'm actually happy, despite the fact that I own two Digusto Emeralds. Um, I think that Digusto was a very, very good hit. Um, a lot of people do not realize how much consistency Digusto Emerald added to a variety of different decks. Um, recycling is underrated, or it's, it's underrated in... You know, the, its importance is underrated in the in the current format and you know in the current meta game and the ability to like recycle things back, whether they be zodiacs, whether they be uh, world chalices, you name it. Like they have the ability to just recycle everything that you need, and I think that's something that really cannot be overlooked in the in the grand scheme of things, um, because. You know, just summon the XYZ monster, recycle whatever you want, and then link that monster away so it's not taking up a spot. So effectively, the only thing that, you know, stopped it was that. A lot of people were also using Emerald, um, to little known fact, to special summon a link, a, 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 a uh, Gaia Saber, the, um, the brand new Link monster from the graveyard after summoning it. So you summon Gaia Saber, rank up into a Firewall Dragon, summon an Emerald, and then um, special Gaia Saber from your graveyard, and all of a sudden you have two Link markers pointing in either direction. So Emerald, Emerald got an incredible amount of use for a lot of different things, and I think Konami, like basically it, it was one of those cards that would have limited card design, and I think Konami was right to um, put the card to zero. Um, one of the things I was surprised about, however, um, before... I move on to the last couple of things was the fact that terraforming was not on the list. And, you know, terraforming, a lot of people were expecting it to get hit to one due to the release of set rotation and metaphors, as well as the fact that, like, broken field spells have now become the norm in, um, in the new game. You know, the best example, of course, is Grand Fortress Zellos, which, you know, while it, it, it elevated, it was such a good field spell that it elevated um, BES from unplayable to like tier like 2.5 to 2, um, depending on the pilot, which, you know, that, that I think is like the best example of like the level of field spell that Konami has been creating as of late. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely surprised about that, but no doubt on the next list, Terraforming is going to get its hit. Once Metaverse comes out and Konami, like my prediction, of course, is that Konami, uh, around the time of the Circuit Break Special Edition, is going to release another ban list that puts Metaverse to one, or th that puts Terraforming to one. So, moving on now, for the last two cards in the ban column, we have Dryden and Broadbull. Now, I really, really like the fact that they did this. They hit the cards that gave the power and not any of the consistency of Zoo. Zoo works perfectly as an engine, but, you know, being able to have a um, Beast Warrior Searcher to gain pluses, as well as a card that could pop things on your opponent's turn um, for literally free, you know, literally like one card in your hand can get you that, a barrage. Like, the amount of just advantage you gained from Zodiac was way too incredible. So I like the hits because it doesn't limit the advantage that Zodiac gives, so it's kind of not like in the same vein as tr the true Draco hit. And this one, they made a hit to the power of the uh, the deck because you shouldn't have that much advantage for free. However, you can still use Zodiac as a, a engine of sorts to go into like different XYZs or to make just normal rank fours with other things that you want to normal summon. And I think, you know, for, for decks like Bujins or for other things to splash in an engine to go into like uh to go into like a Kagutsuchi or a Susanoo or like um, any number of other XYZs could be a really interesting thing to see. So now moving on to the cards that got hit to one. Um, Ignis Heat, of course, I'm not going to say too much about this because, it, of course, again, it is another, it is the next best hit to the consistency of true Dracos. Um, you know, really, Konami is trying to cripple 
cripple the deck without eliminating like diagram and masterpiece, which could be which could find themselves very useful in different decks. Um, the next, of course, is Miscellaneous Saurus, another hit to to true uh, to uh, dinosaurs. Um, a lot of people don't like this hit. They think that Avaraptor should have been hit, but I I personally agree with this. I think Miscellaneous Saurus does a ton for the dinosaur deck. But Avaraptor is ultimately the playmaker, so it keeps dinosaurs playable, but it doesn't keep them broken. So I think Konami wants to eliminate the true kings and have people just play dinosaurs as they were meant to be played. And I think, you know, it, it was really great for them to keep Avaraptor at three, and I just wish they could have brought Stratos back to one. Next card, of course, is Rapier. Uh, with the Rapier getting hit to one, he loses a lot of power and consistency and might not even be run depending on uh, whether or not you add a Zodiac engine to your deck. But Rapier, um, you know, you can no longer detach him to search a copy of himself, which you could do in uh, previous Zodiac builds. So seeing him go to, um, go to one removes that entire ability to use that effect. However, you still can use his effect to send a Zodiac from the deck to the graveyard, but um, you know it, it like it all depends on like what you what you want to play with. And I think now with the Zodiac engine hit as much as it has, that could be even more important than a lot of people realize. So, moving on, we have Dark Hole went back to one. Um, I was hoping to see Dark Hole come to three, but with the prevalence of board wipes and people going second and siding two Dark Holes in the deck. Um, I can see why they did this. Basically, just preventing your opponent from, you know, having like a massive level board wipe was like one of the big reasons I think that Konami did this. And the other one, I think, you know, I think that they were trying to just eliminate everything that, eliminate Zodiacs and everything that the format brought with it. So I kind of don't agree with it in the sense that, um, you know, Dark Hole is not really that broken of a card, but board wipes were only popular because Zodiac popularized them. Uh, Zodiac was basically very much a um, consistency deck rather than a power one, and just won by completely just out-resourcing your opponent and having things like Dryden and Broadbull, not broken by their by themselves, but broken when they're really, really free, um, you know, do stuff like that. And so Dark Hole went to one. I also think that they want to move copies of uh, Struggling Battle when it comes out. And it's definitely going to be a secret rare. No doubt about that. Next card, of course, we have Gateway of the Six Samurai coming back to one. Um, Gateway has been on the list for a very, very long time. And Konami really wants to sell that brand new Six Samurai support. I'm happy with this. Um, I think Gateway could come back to two or three. Um, even if people make degenerate six samurai loops nothing is going to you know have the same kind of otk power or like whatever as some crazy crazy stuff out there Shien is no longer the beast he used to be and um you know it's great to see six sams get a little bit of their power back in time for the uh structure deck or for the uh for the uh, spirit warriors pack the next card we have on the list is um kaiju slumber and Kaiju Slumber is another one of those board wipe cards that I think was just incredibly broken. Um, you know, on, on, like you could activate this card to wipe an entire board, put a Kaiju on each side of the field, usually give yourself the more powerful one. And then on the next turn after that, you could banish the card from your graveyard to search a Kaiju from deck. Um, an incredible amount of utility in the card. And I think Kaiju is being an out to a lot of different things. Um, Konami wants to keep the like the sheer consistency that Kaiju Slumber brought, and so I think this was a this was a good hit. Um, if Konami's trying to switch the meta game sort of away from away from Kaiju's, because trying to hit the Kaiju's themselves is not really going to it's not really going to do anything. And Slumber, the card that really enables them to be that broken engine, was a very good hit. I am in my opinion. So now, the final thing we have on the list, of course, is True King's Return, the trap card. Um, great to see this also go to one. Um, removes a lot more of the consistency, though I don't know whether or not, you know, they'll search it or whatever with Dynamite banned, but just having one of those in the deck will give a lot of people reason to be happy. So now moving on to the cards that go to two. Um, this video is getting a little bit long, guys, so my apologies for that. But 
Uh, Konami put a lot of different cards to two, um, and I'm pretty happy with some of them. I just wish they could have given me one of my Atlantean Dragoons back. But, uh, you know, I'll, I'll just wait for next list. I'll just wait for next list when they when they release some more Mermail things in, the, in that Link Frames pack. Hopefully, maybe. Please. All right, so starting off, guys, we've got BLS. Um, I remember when BLS first came off the list and was at one. Um, it was probably one of the most broken cards in the game. Um, I played that card in in my uh, Chaos Agent decks, and it was not uncommon to hear top deck BLS for game. Um, but now, you know, if you if someone says that, like, definitely going to deserve a laugh with the amount of just combo and like other stuff that's out there so bls i think is a card that has been largely power creeped and can definitely come back to two in this format um it's an insanely good card if you can utilize it correctly but it just doesn't have the disruption um that it used to that that like most of the cards that are released now have uh, moving on, we got Luster Pendulum back to two. Um, about time, I think they're starting to give Peppy back a little bit of their stuff due to the fact that Pendulums are now neutered in very large part by the Link format. And I think Pendulums could still be a very, very viable deck. Um, we haven't seen any kind of results yet. There are some regionals coming up this weekend. Um, we haven't seen any direct results for uh, pendulums, but a lot of people are starting to play those pendulum magicians, and luster is really great for them to bring back to one or to bring back to two. We got mathematician coming back to two, give a little bit more consistency. I think this is the uh, the very start to um, you know bringing back like BA. I know they're releasing that link monster coming up soon, and giving BA back one mathematician. Met one mathematician is going to be really, really good for pushing that new set. Um, I think they're doing like a nice slow burn here, so that all the all the stuff on like the next ban list is going to be back to you know two or three by the time uh, the link frames pack comes up with all the new support. Uh, Brian Act coming back to two, um, really, really great to see that as well. Never thought I'd see the day. Um, Brian Act was responsible for a ton of other really, really big loops. And uh, now, you know, with the this was one of the erratas that I actually like because it, it brought the card back to what its intended use was, and so really great to see that back at two. Um, just gives a little bit more options. Brain control, um, not really doing anything um, right now. They just gave it a terrible, terrible errata. That's that's the common theme with Konami is um, they don't fix cards that have bad card design. Um, if they do it, it's very rarely. Um, you know, they, they gave Necro Valley and they gave the um, uh, X, Y, and Z Union Monsters a slight power buff, but with this, you know, they didn't do it. Um, they just errata things to, to obscurity and they just destroy them and then they release them back into the format so that they can have a reprint and then, you know, you never see the dang cards again. So that was that. Um, we also have Librarian to two. This should be very interesting. Um, Giving, giving like these synchro decks a little bit of power and a little bit of draw capability back during link format. I said that library, like we, um, Tamias actually had librarian coming back to three. Um, and I didn't really believe him that they'd take librarian off the list, but they really did. Um, and I think they're trying to, they're in the same way that they did with snatch steel, trying to just test the format and see what develops. So cool to see librarian back at two. We got uh, Burial from a Different Dimension back at two of, as well. Um, really, really great for those graveyard and zombie decks. Uh, this is one of the first, um, I think this is one of the first helpouts to like DDDs and Vendreds and a lot of things that get their stuff banished like all of the time. Uh, Konami, of course, is pushing that new TCG archetype Vendred. And we see that as well with the semi-limit to preparation of rights. Necroz gain, gain a little bit of power from that, but I think Konami is trying to, they're trying to make Vendreds into something really, really good. So great to see that. The final card we have on the semi-limit is El Shadal Fusion. And I think this is just the start of the Shadal rain that is about to drop on us when the new Link monster drops. Um, I think Konami is in a big, big, um, situation here to try and start to give Shadal's a little bit of stuff back and then on the next list I'm betting you any money guys mark my words on this construct is going to be coming back to one and Shadal's are going to be a deck again so really really awesome 
Now, that is it for the semi-limits, and we're moving on to the unlimits. We're not going to really take too much time on this, uh, but yeah. So starting off, we got Debris Dragon finally coming back to 3 after all of this time being at 2, at 1, sometimes even, you know, at band. Um, I don't really know if that's true or not, but at least at 2 and at least at 1, or um, at least during the time that I was playing around the end of Plant Synchro format. But great seeing Debris Dragon back. It's lost a lot of its power. Um, it's a normal summon. Uh, for a synchro, and the, the debris uh, dandy combo was not really as crazy as it once was. So, great to see that back. Uh, we got Honest back to three. This should be interesting with the release of the Twilight Sworn stuff. Um, awesome to uh, awesome to see the brand new, uh, or awesome to see them put Honest back to three. This should be crazy for that, and it should also give a nice little boost to Trick Stars as well. Um, lots of low attack monsters that need a little bit of a boost. Um, this meta could be. Very, very interesting. Uh, we got Rescue Cat and Rescue Rabbit back to three. Huge, huge. Uh, Rescue Rabbit, I think, more than Cat. Um, with Rabbit back to three, you can play Logia set for a pass, but it, um, but in the place of Emeralds, it gives a real boost to Star Grails slash World Chalice. Um, and a lot of people are trying to pick it up. This has been a unlimited that has been a long, long time coming. You name it, you know, Star Grails, Logia set four, Dinosaurs, um, a lot of decks, like a lot of decks, like both competitive and casual, gain a lot from this card coming off the list. And I can finally play my crappy um, Magnet Warrior deck again, not with the Electro Magnet ones, the OG Magnet Warriors with three Rabbit inside. So very, very excited about that. Uh, next card we got is Summoner Monk, a very nice unlimited um, Team Time Riders Quantum Break slash Mystical Creature is going to be very happy with that. Summoner's been at two for so long for just no reason, and it's great to see the card back at three. The um, uh, the next card we've got is one that Tamias is going to really, really like, and that's Witch of the Black Forest coming back to three. Uh, Witch of the Black Forest has been a card that has long been banned, but ever since Sangan and its errata, um, the card can easily come back to three. Uh, this was one of the cards that was actually incredibly, incredibly broken um, back in the previous format, so great being able to see the card, you know, get a little bit more of that consistency, and we'll see whether or not players decide to run it. Um, let's see what else we have on here. We have uh, Charge of the Light Brigade coming back to three as well. Great push for Fudgem's Light Swarms. And great for them Twilight Swarms as well. They really, really want to push this stuff in time for the special edition, which I think is why they released this on there. Um, really great. Next, we've got Dragon's Ravine uh, coming back to three. Uh, they're trying to push Destrudo in the next pack. But this gives Dragoonities a nice boost as well, which is also a deck that Fudgems used to play. Um, should be really, really nice to see um, players playing this card again. It's been on the list for a while, thanks to those Dragon Rulers, and you know, a lot of players, a lot of players, I think, are very, very happy to see this off. And it could mean perhaps that Dragoonities are going to get a brand new Link monster. They gave them support in uh, Secrets of Evolution with the with the Dragoonity. Um, spear thing, and so this could be them setting up for like a really nice next uh, next piece of support for them. The final card that we have on the list is going to be Wavering Eyes, and Wavering Eyes, I think, is a fantastic unlimit, really, really gives Pendulums a lot of their power back. Um, they're not as broken as they used to be, and they can really do a lot of stuff. Um, they can't really do a lot under links, and Wavering Eyes is is going to give them a much needed boost that I think that they really need to be competitive. So, you know, I'm very, very happy with, with Wavering Eyes coming back to three. A lot of people are trying to pick up their super rare copies of the card, but it's a very cool, uh, it's a very cool unlimited. So that is it for the list, guys. Um, give my final thoughts, I guess, is that we're largely seeing the end of True Draco Zodiac meta with the crazy amount of dominance. Uh, True Draco got hit um, on its consistency, and Zodiac got hit on its power plays. Um, two different hits that allow the engines to still be playable, but not at the level of competition that they would be before. Um, so that's really good. And I think uh, a lot of decks are going to come in and take the spotlight here. We've got 
um, you know, it's hard, it's hard to say what the new meta is going to be, but we got, um, a ton of different decks vying for the top. So we'll immediately, of course, we'll have ABCs coming out. We'll have Cosmos, Blue Eyes, Trick Stars, um, just some crazy, uh, some, like, a lot of different strategies people might be running, like Chain Burn might make a, make an appearance there, um, Pendulums are definitely, I think, going to be a force to be reckoned with at the regionals this weekend, a lot of people saying they might be the best deck, um, yeah, like, just, this format's definitely going to, it's definitely going to be see, uh, interesting to see what's going to happen with both True Draco and Zodiac gone, and not really any defined strategy here to take its place. Circuit Break is very much a consistency pack rather than one that adds, you know, some crazy archetypes to the series. So it'll be, it'll definitely be interesting to see what develops. And of course, when Circuit Break releases, my spirals are going to be reigning supreme at the top of the pack, and I am very, very excited for that. So guys, um, you know, if you like the video, uh, please remember to give a like, comment, and subscribe, and, you know, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, and this has been the Mermail Master with the Team Time Riders Yugi Tube channel, and I am signing out, so I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.